This is Into Math 3rd Grade Lesson 9.1, Identify Number Patterns on the Addition Table. I can identify number patterns on an addition table. I can use the identity and commutative properties of addition to complete equations. Please gather your workbook and a pencil and turn to page 242 under Build Understanding Part 1. You may pause if needed. John uses patterns to find sums in an addition table. As a quick reminder, an add-in plus an add-in equals a sum. Part A, John finds zero plus three and five plus zero. And we see that he found zero plus three and he wrote in his answer here three. And then he also uh, found five plus zero and he wrote his answer in here five. So it asks us to write other sums with zero as one add-in. So this means we are going to go through each um, number and say zero plus zero and write the answer, which would be zero. We're gonna say zero plus one and write the answer, which is one. If you'd like to pause and complete just writing the sums for zero on this chart, you may do so or just follow along with me. So we'll continue on zero plus two is going to give us two. Zero plus three, we already have that answer. Zero plus four is four. Zero plus five is five. Zero plus six is six. Zero plus seven is seven. 0 plus 8 is 8, 0 plus 9 is 9, and 0 plus 10 is 10. Now we will complete the chart by saying 1 plus 0 makes 1, and 2 plus 0 makes 2, and continue on. So if you would like to, again, pause and complete this on your own, you may do that. I'm going to keep filling in 6 plus 0 is 6, 7 plus 0 is 7, 8 plus 0 is 8, 9 plus 0 is 9, and 10 plus 0 is 10. So we have completed um, the other sums with 0. Now let's take a look at part B. What pattern do you see when you find the sum of any number, the sum of any number, and 0? zero. So this is really asking, what's that pattern that you're seeing? And we find that the sum is the same number as that number. So now we can move on to part C. John finds two plus four and four plus two, and he writes them here. Again, that's two plus four, and he writes that here six. And then he also finds that four plus two makes six, and he writes that in as well. Choose a column or a row. So remember, rows go this way and the columns go up and down with the same add-in. Write the sums. Record the equations. So what you're going to do is you can pick whichever one you like. Um, they do give us some hints here underneath the chart. It says 5 plus 0 equals 5, 5 plus 1 equals 6, 5 plus 2 equals 7, and so on. And that's um, that would be in the row or the column. And so if you wanna use this hint and choose five, you can do that. But then you would, again, you would enter in all the information for the fives in the column and in the row. So whichever number you choose, you're going to fill in both the row and the column. So you can pause now and select your add-in. You can write your facts and then fill in the row and column. I am going to select the add-in six with the numbers. So I will be entering in that information when you come back. I am going to write my facts under part C. So after I have written all of my facts from zero to 10, then I'm going to enter them in on the columns. So I'm going to do um, six plus zero is six, which is already written. Then I'm going to just add six plus one, which is here, seven. And I'm just going to enter in all of the information on the column like so. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the row. And then I've now completed my row. So I have recorded all the equations and followed all the um, information on part C. And if you need to pause to do this, um, you need more time, you're welcome to do that. All right, now let's take a look at part D. 
what patterns do you see in the equations that you wrote? And so you are gonna be pausing and looking at your add-ins. I'm looking at the sixes. But no matter what add-in you chose, you're going to find that it's going to be the same pattern. Here I have six plus three. And when I make six plus three, I get nine. Six plus three equals nine. Now watch as the order changes. If I make three plus six, I will still get the same sum, which is nine. So three plus six is also nine. And I'm noticing that on any of these add-ins that I can um, change the order of my add-ins and I will still have the same sum. Let's take a look at another example here. We have six, plus seven, and that's going to make 13. So my add-ins are six and seven, and my sum will be 13. So now I'm just gonna change the order. I'm gonna say seven plus six is also going to give me the answer of 13. So I just changed the order, seven plus six, and I got 13. So what pattern are you seeing um, in your equation? Well, the order of the add-ins changed, but the sum stays the same. Now let's take a look at the connective vocabulary. While working with part B and C and D, we have discovered some properties. The first property is the identity property of addition, and that states that the sum of any number and zero is that number. And that was the pattern we found here when we were um, filling in the, the addition chart with zero and another add-in. We were finding that anytime we added zero and a number, we were always gonna get that number. And that is the identity property of addition. Then we also found the commutative property of addition, which states that you can add two or more numbers in any order and you will get the same sum. And we have a lot of examples, but over here we were um, showing some examples with the add-in six and three and six and seven. Please remember you can always go back and re-watch this video at any time and pause along the way as needed.